Hey, this is Carolina Millan and in today's video I want to share with you five lessons that I've learned from Russell Brunson. Stay tuned. If it's your first time watching one of my videos, make sure you hit the subscribe button, like the video as well, leave me a comment, let me know if you enjoyed the video, if you are subscribed and all of that because your support is what allows me to continue to create content for you. Now, before we dive into the video, I'm in the common room in a really beautiful lodge here in the south of Chile. And as you can see over there, there's a beautiful lake. The weather is not so good today. That's why I'm inside in the middle of the day. Uh, but it's a really nice lodge in nature. There's a lake and down there, there's a pool and some trees and it's a really, really nice. And I have this entire room to myself right now. So I figured, Let's make a video. So Russell Brunson is the co-founder of ClickFunnels, a company that I've been following for who, ever since their inception, 2014. I actually remember signing up for a free trial around September of 2014, but then I didn't renew my trial. Like I didn't keep using it. I was using a different uh, service called Lead Pages. <laughs> and uh, it wasn't until January of 2015 uh, like three months later, that I met Russell in person and I had been following him since 2012. So that's a really long time, longer than I'd like to admit. But I met Russell on a cruise. We were on a cruise called the Marketer's Cruise and I went there with a friend and it was really cool when I recognized him somewhere inside the cruise. I was like, oh my God, I told my friend, is that Russell Brunson? We were like, oh my God. And I felt like really starstruck. <laughs> like, like I was just meeting a celebrity because for me and for most digital entrepreneurs, he is a celebrity. And so I approached him, I introduced myself, we took a photo and he knew who I was because back then I was a really successful affiliate. And so he knew me and that was like an incredible honor for me. And um, he invited me to be an affiliate for, Cl uh, for ClickFunnels and for the launch of his book, Dotcom Secrets. So, Immediately I switched to ClickFunnels and I stopped using the other thing. A couple years later, in late 2015, uh, 2017, early 2018, I got inducted into the Two Comma Club. Why? Because I achieved my first $1 million using the ClickFunnels platform. There are only like a few thousand people. I don't know if it's already 2,000 or 1,500, but it's not that many people that have sold over a million dollars using ClickFunnels. And so for me, that was another major honor, one of the biggest achievements in my career as a woman entrepreneur. And so over the years, I have learned a lot from Russell and um, I wanted to summarize five of the biggest lessons, but honestly, it's so much that I could do a video with like a hundred lessons I learned from Russell, <laughs> but let's keep it to five. And by the way, if you are not using ClickFunnels yet, you can go to followcarolina.com forward slash click funnels. That is my affiliate link. So if you sign up for a free trial there, you can check it out and I would be very happy if you did. All right, let's dive into the video. So lesson number one, this is the first lesson I learned from Russell. And the funny thing is he learned it from Tony Robbins, actually another of my biggest mentors. I did a video on the five lessons I learned from Tony, which is going to be linked here in the video. If you can watch it later, that would be great. But the lesson is to model what works. What does this mean? It means that instead of reinventing the wheel, you find people who are already doing what you want to be doing or what you're doing, but they are ahead of you, right? So you find people who are already doing what you want to do and they're doing it successfully and you see what they do, you study them, you figure out a way to get closer to them, you get mentorship from them or you see them speak, uh, speak, uh, read their books, pay for their mentorship, but find people who are already living your dream or or close to it. They're already running the business that you want to run and they are a few steps ahead of you or sometimes several steps ahead of you. And now let me clarify something important here. When you find somebody you want to model, you're like, that person is my role model. I want to do what they do. I'm going to study them. Don't copy them. That's why the word you use here is model what works, not copy what works. Because if you copy someone, that means you do exactly what they do and you say exactly what they say and you try to sell exactly what they sell, etc., etc. And maybe that's not going to work for you because you are not them. So you want to remain as unique and authentic as possible and simply take what works, discard what doesn't. Some of the things people who are more advanced are doing are not going to apply to your current reality because you're here, they are there. 
you're in chapter one of your story, they are already chap chapter 147. So there are a lot of things that you still need to go through before you model what they do now. What you can do instead is figure out how they started. What were those people doing a couple years ago that was working for them? What are they doing today that would work for you with where you are now? What's really important is that you don't copy someone else just because they are successful and just because they are following a certain strategy, that doesn't mean it's gonna work for you because they have different resources, different, uh, they're in a different stage in their business. So it's very important to figure out what works, be as self-aware as possible and discard what doesn't or keep it for later. And I would recommend, strongly recommend, if you find somebody who's doing what you want to be doing, they're living the life you want to live, buy something from them. A course, mentoring, figure out how to get closer to those people. Observe, adapt, and model. That is lesson number one. Model what works. Lesson number two. I love this one. Let the market decide. And I love when Russell says this because, um, and this is, you know, this may not be for everyone, but what Russell says is, you know, whenever you come up with an idea for a funnel, let's say you have a new product idea, a new service idea, you create a, you build a funnel on ClickFunnels, you launch that funnel, you throw a thousand dollars in Facebook ads or YouTube ads or whatever, thousand dollars in traffic, and then you figure out what does the market say. If you have a positive return or you break even, let's say you at least break even with your product or service. Awesome. The market seems to like it. It's worth to pursue this, you know, maybe adjust, tweak, figure out how to make it profitable. But if you throw a thousand dollars in traffic at a funnel, nobody buys, and nobody seems to care and people are not clicking. They're not getting this product or service. The market is telling you, Hey, we don't like that. <laughs> that's uh, that's not what we want. So you want to figure out what the market wants and give it to them. You don't give the market what you think they want or what you want to give them. You figure out what they want and then you give them what they need. Sell them what they want, deliver what they need. Usually it's not exactly the same thing, but it's gonna be, it's gonna be very much aligned. The important thing is don't fall in love with your product or service. And by the way, this is a lesson I learned from Tony. But Tony says, don't fall in love with your product or service, fall in love with your customer. So let the market decide. And if they decide that it sucks, move on, figure out something else and give it to them. What is it that they want? Give it to them. Lesson number three, another of my favorites, under promise, over deliver. So under promise, over deliver. What this means is you blow people away. You lower expectations and then you exceed expectations when you deliver. So for example, if you invite people to a free training, probably, you know, people are going to attend. Expectations are not going to be super high because, well, it was free, but then you blow them away and you give them amazing content and incredible value so that they feel like they owe you. They feel like they should have paid for it. That's over delivering. So always figure out how can I give people more than they expect? How can I give people more than I promised? I would, I would give them. How can I shock people in a good way? How can I make people feel marveled at something? And this applies to any product or service that you might be selling. The important thing is that you're constantly striving to over deliver above your promise. This can go wrong when people do it the other way around. They build hype over a product service, so they over promise. And then when the time comes to deliver, they under deliver. And that my friend is a sure way to go broke and to lose your credibility, lose your fans or customers or followers or whatever. So don't do that. Don't create hype for something where you cannot deliver on that hype. You cannot deliver on the promise. So always, always do the opposite under promise over deliver. Lesson number four that I learned from Russell. And by the way, I learned this one by reading his book, Traffic Secrets. If you don't have that book, my friend, you need to get it right now. You can go to this link right now, followcarolina.com forward slash traffic secrets. The sun is coming out in the clouds and I cannot see very well, but I'm going to keep doing the video anyway. <laughs> Lesson number four, dig your well before you're thirsty. Dig your well before you're thirsty. What does this mean? It means, my friend, that you start building trust and credibility and you start networking with people, not only um, your audience or your community or people who could be potential clients, but also people that you look up to or people who are around 
you know, maybe the same level as you in business or a higher level than you in business and you see potential for collaborations, you see potential for doing something for each other. But before you ask, before you ask, you build that trust. Hey, maybe I can do something for this person. This person looks really, you know, like we could really collaborate and do something cool together. But before I ask them to do something for me, I ask them if I can do something for them. That's what it means to dig your well before you're thirsty. What do most people do? They go, they, they don't even build a well. They want to extract the water right away. So they approach people and immediately ask for favors or immediately ask them, hey, can you promote this for me? Hey, you want to be an affiliate for me? Hey, you want to do this for me? And they're always figuring out what they can get out of other people. And this, again, this applies for, you know, people you, you see as partners and also potential customers. So with your potential customers, what you want to do is you give them value. We go back to lesson number three, over the liver. So you give your potential customers, your audience, your community, you give them value, content, training, so before you immediately ask them to buy your stuff. And then from the people you want to work with or collaborate with, you figure out how you can serve them first. This is another concept of, as well that I also learned from Russell called the dream 100. And the dream 100 is, usually it's more than 100, but you build a list of people that you want to work with and that you potentially see, if I could get this person to put my product or service in front of their audience, wouldn't that be amazing? But before I ask them for that, what can I do for them first? Always figure out how can you serve people before you ask. Like Gary Vee would say, another person I admire so much, as you know, he has a book called Jab, 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 Right Hook. Well, jab, 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 right hook. <laughs> what that means is you give, 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 and then ask. You don't ask immediately, okay? You don't ask immediately, you give. And lesson number five that I learned from Russell Brunson, hook, story, offer. The hook, story, offer framework. And you can use this framework pretty much everywhere in your marketing. You can use it in your emails, you can use it on videos, you can use it on your webinars, on a Facebook ad. And what it means, let's deconstruct it. First you have the hook. So literally think about going fishing, you know, think about a hook. And when you go fishing and you catch a fish, you have a hook right at the end of your fishing, what do you call this, fishing cane? I forgot the name for it, but, but you know what I'm saying, right? If you wanna catch a fish, you need a hook. So if you think about your potential customers, you want their attention. And the only way to get attention from people in such a noisy world is by standing out. Doing something that, you know, when they're scrolling on their feed, you make them stop. So something that draws attention. It can be a photo that stands out. It can be a headline. It can be a question. I love using questions or, or statements that can be a little controversial, but not too much. You don't want to offend anyone, but sometimes you want to be a little more polarizing and stand for something. So that, that could be a hook. Again, it could be a video, it could be a photo, it could be a question, it could be a headline, it could be a statement. And you can use that on an ad, you can use that on a video, you can use that on an email. Like for example, the subject line of an email in an email marketing campaign, the subject line is a hook because the subject line is what's gonna get people's attention and it's gonna make them open the email. It doesn't matter how great the content of the email is if nobody's opening it. So the hook would be the subject line for an email. If you have a funnel, the hook would be the headline. Once you figure out what is the hook, then you tell a story. Ideally, you wanna tell a story that people can relate to. And this is something I learned in a totally different book, and I'm gonna make a video about that very soon, um, called Story Brand by Donald Miller. And what he says is, well, when you tell a story, you need to think about your potential customer or your client or your audience as the hero of the story. You are the guide. So you, my friend, your Yoda, your customer is Luke Skywalker, not the other way around. So when you tell the story, it's okay. You can tell a personal story, but make sure that the way you tell the story is to get your client's attention because, hey, they can, they can see themselves in there. You can also tell a story of a customer of yours, like a case study, but share something that positions you as an authority and also as somebody who can help them. So that would be the story. The story would be to keep the attention. So the hook draws the attention with the story, you keep the attention. And then 
you have the offer. And the offer, this is the moment where you have a call to action. You tell them, hey, click here to go check this out. Click here to apply. Click here to go get this uh, special product right now. Click here to redeem this coupon. There has to be an offer. Now, the offer doesn't always have to be a purchase or a sale. Sometimes what I do in the majority of my videos is that instead of having uh, an offer at the end where you have to buy something, I invite you to subscribe and hit the like button and leave a comment. I tell you what is the next step. And that also helps me. It helps with the YouTube and Facebook algorithms. If you like the video, if you leave a comment, if you subscribe, if you follow me. So you don't want to be selling, selling all the time. At least that's not my style. But at the same time, don't be afraid of selling. Don't be afraid of making an offer. I mean, the worst thing that can happen is that people don't buy and that's okay. It'll help you figure out, hey, people like the hook. They're reading the story or listening to the story if it's a video, but they're not buying. Okay, let's tweak it. Maybe the offer is not right. So don't feel bad, but also don't be afraid of selling. Don't be afraid of selling. And you can have multiple calls to action that do different things and not always, it doesn't always have to be um, a purchase. So my friend, those were five lessons that I learned from Russell Brunson. The video ended up a little longer than I wanted, but if you watch this far, then I do have an offer for you. I would love to work with you and help you implement not only this lessons, but a lot of other marketing secrets and strategies that I've been learning over the past 10, well, 12 years now, and I'd love to work with you. So if you wanna work with me, go to go.workwithcarolina.com, go.workwithcarolina.com, fill out the application form, and my team and I will get in touch with you to let you know what the program is about. That is my one-on-one -on -one elite mentoring program. And I'm looking for my next success story. I'm looking for my next uh, case study, somebody that I can help. I can help you with your funnels, with your ads, your branding, your content, your offer. And I would love to work with you. So go ahead, and you'll also find the link in the description. Thanks so much for watching this video. Once again, hit the like button, subscribe, leave a comment. Let me know if you enjoyed this. Let me know what other lessons you have learned from Russell if you also follow him. And I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Bye.